yes, you read the title right. I really did watch those films. No, this isn't some April Fool's joke that I accidentally forgot to release until today. I seriously have, over the last several weeks, watched every single Twilight film. Yes, I did that to myself. And because I did that to myself, you're going to have to listen to me talk about it. So in terms of why I did it, there were two main reasons. The first was there was a gun to, I, I mean, <laughs> I had friends telling me, you know, you really need to watch these, you really need to see these. And secondly, I was curious. I, I was genuinely so curious. I heard more than a few times in my life about how shockingly bad Twilight was. I mean, it certainly had a terrible reputation when it came out, but I've never even seen a clip from it. Like, I've heard so much about how it was really cringeworthy and, and certain moments that people remember, but I, I didn't understand. I mean, how could I understand? I've never seen it. I, I have no idea what they're talking about. The only way I can really be in on the joke, I suppose, is to make my own mind up on it. So that's what I did. Now this is going to be a little bit different than the kind of video that I normally do because I normally do this on individual films and not as an entire franchise. Side note, I'm very happy I did this as a franchise as a single video rather than as five videos because I think they would have got boring easily and also because I don't want to make five videos about Twilight. <laughs> What I'm going to do, I'm going to spend a bit of time talking about each film and then come to a sort of a general conclusion about the franchise. I will try and do my best to point out some positives as well as the negatives because it can be very easy with anything in life, but especially with something with this kind of reputation, to just be negative about it. So I will start, perhaps unsurprisingly, with Twilight. This came out in 2008, which I must admit I didn't realise how long ago it had been now, and in our introduction to the franchise, where our main character Bella Swan moves to a small town with her father and starts a new life there, going to school, etc, etc, etc. There she meets Edward Cullen, figures out he's a vampire, starts a relationship with him, meets his vampire family, gets hunted by other vampires, one of them gets killed, and then she goes to the prom. Basically, it's just a normal life as a teenager. I'll be honest, I'm struggling to point out a specific positive thing for this film. It's not that the film is like all bad, because it's not necessarily, but it's difficult to find something and say this is a really good part, this is a really good thing, because there weren't really that many moments like that. I, I, the best thing I can kind of say about this film is it's our introduction to the world, and as that goes, it's, it's a pretty good job. We, we, we learn about the world, we learn about the characters. It, it does a good job of that, it does a good job of that. In terms of negatives, it's a lot easier. It, it, I've heard a lot about the cringeworthy dialogue and writing, but witnessing it firsthand was... Witnessing it firsthand was an experience <laughs> and a half. Oh my lord, and I can't even finish talking about this without saying about how Bella's attitude towards Edward is so unbelievably messed up. I mean, he literally said at one point that he could kill her, that he could kill loads of people, that he's a vicious hunter and a monster, and, and her, her little response is she just doesn't care. And she is dangerously obsessed with him, and she seems to think that's fine, but oh boy, it's not. The film treats it like it's fine and it's normal. It's not. It's really not. Next up, we have Twilight New Moon, which introduces the other side of the supernatural world to us, Werewolves. This film deals with Edward leaving Bella and her subsequent and very serious depression, I mean, Jesus Christ, which she eventually gets out of by getting close to Jacob, who is one of the werewolves. Oh, and there's also a trip to Italy to stop Edward killing himself because he thinks Bella is dead. It's very Romeo and Juliet. <laughs> Uh, it's easier actually to find some positives in this because I will say the walls and how that's done and how they are, they look cool. Also Italy and the, I'm going to make sure I get this right, Volturi? Yes, Volturi actually look pretty cool. The name is cool and the style is cool and yeah, I I can't help but be like, yeah, they're cool. cool. They're very emo, but they're very cool. <laughs> negatives. Oh boy, the negatives. From Jacob just full on being forceful with Bella and Bella just fully needing therapy instead of a boyfriend but apparently the boyfriend is the most important thing. It is so easy to pick faults with this one. I mean it, it, it's got a few cool moments to be sure but it's certainly not what I would call a strong film. Next we move on to Twilight Eclipse which is much better reviews than New Moon. 
But that is a very low bar because New Moon got savaged in the reviews. <laughs> the film serves to further uh, Bella and Edward's relationship and also to help tie up some of the loose ends from the first film by dealing with one of the enemies, Victoria. But honestly, the film, and I suppose it would be the book by extension, feels like a bit of a filler that wasn't really needed. The only thing it does maybe is perhaps introduce a little bit more to the uneasy relationship between the Wolves and the Cullens, but even that maybe could have been compressed into the book before and after. It maybe didn't need to be this whole thing. But I said I was going to find some positives, so let me see. Actually, it wasn't too difficult. Just about one of the only things that these films have consistently been able to do is sort of the fight things, the battle things, stuff like that. I mean, and this film is no exception. Like it, It's a genuinely, genuinely good moment. In terms of what's bad... God, where do I even start? It'd be such a list. I, 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 I... Yeah, it's... Yeah, this is not great. This is not great. I have some serious questions for the writer uh, about the character's motivations and logic and the reason they do things and also just the stuff that the thing is okay. A lot of weird stuff. Like, certainly a lot of what the fuck moments. And now we move on to the worst reviews film out of all of these Twilight Breaking Dawn Part 1. Which I actually found mildly better because I felt like it at least progressed the story. That's the extent of the positives I'm going to be able to give it. <laughs> I went through the reviews, and the worst thing I can say, let me see if I can get this quote. If you have to take someone to this movie, you won't suffer too much. Is that the best thing someone can find to say about it? Wow. But also, if I'm going to find a positive, being it's one book split into two films, it was never going to be super amazing. I always feel like that when that's done, the film is usually quite slow. It ends up normally having to be padded out. And, and you notice that. This didn't feel like that. So I will actually give them credit for that. You know, if, if you ignore the cringeworthy wedding and honeymoon acting, the terrible messages, the completely avoidable conflict, the general toxicity that seems to be commonplace at the moment. Oh, and, and the CGI baby. What what the hell was up with that? Why didn't they just use an actual bloody baby? <sighs> I don't understand the decisions that were, went into these films. I'm sorry, but I don't understand. I'm going off script. I don't get it. I've been thinking about this. For ages, and I don't understand. <laughs> and then we move on to the finale, to Breaking Dawn Part 2, and... I have opinions. I will keep them under wrap for now, though. And we'll start with the positives. Which I guess really has to be the battle. The battle is so cool, and it's the first time in this franchise I really felt invested. Which is why this negative comes out as such bullshit. What the actual fuck? It was all a dream is such a bullshit cop out in any film. But in this franchise, it felt so bad. Like, I had struggled to be invested in any of these films. I struggled to really care about any of the characters. And suddenly, there's this really cool bit. There's this, you know, what the fuck moment. There's these things that you actually get really invested. You actually start thinking, I'm actually starting to really enjoy this. Psych, never happened, just a dream. Can't even have that. I saw this film two days before recording this, and I am still not okay. <sighs> right, so that was the Twilight franchise, <laughs> and how do I feel about it overall? Mm, it, it's not great, is it? it? It's really not great. Look, I'm happy I saw it. If nothing else, my curiosity is satisfied, and I can now understand the references that people make, but that's really the only positive I can think of about watching it. The effects and the battles were good, and it had a solid soundtrack. But those things do not outweigh the bad. From the toxic and terrible messages, which is especially troubling when you bear in mind this was meant for a teen audience, uh, to the illogical storyline, the questionable acting and decisions and directing, and oh my god. Normally, with something like this, I would say, I can see why the target audience would like that. You know, even something like Fortnite. Like, I don't like Fortnite, but I understand it. And I understand why the target audience likes it. I can't say that about this. I don't get it. I mean, I, I guess if you were young enough that the really bad, toxic messages would have gone right over your head. But this must have screwed up a few young, impressionable minds, right? Like, this must have taught some people... 
some sort of behaviour and attitudes that they had to unlearn later in life. I, I could go on a full rant about this, but that is not the purpose of this series. The purpose of this series is to watch something new and give an opinion on it, and I've done that. And with that done, I'm going to leave this video here. Seeing the Twilight films was an experience. Whether or not it's a good one, whether or not it will be stored in this brain as a good memory over time, we'll have to wait and see. Do you have any thoughts or any ideas about what I should try next? If you have something you think I'll like, and please make sure it is that kind of recommendation. I've had enough of watching bad films out of curiosity for the moment. <laughs> Let me know down below, and I will see you next time.